Hello. Hello, everyone. How are things? All looking forward to this experience? Who has seen Property Elevator on the telly? Who hasn't seen Property Elevator on the telly? And you're probably wondering, what the hell is all this about? Or you are tired of walking around all day and needed to put your feet up somewhere, and you thought this might be a comfy zone. Well, let me tell you what this is about. Property Elevator is a bit like Dragon's Den. It's a pitch show which appears on Sky TV, and it's where property entrepreneurs present their property projects for funding. There are five angel investors on the show, and we evaluate those deals. I mean, when people come on the show, we don't see any of the deals until five minutes before they come on to pitch. They present their deals, and then if we like them, we kind of bid or compete against each other to provide funding and backing to the uh, uh, entrepreneur to actually make those deals happen. So if you need funding, it's great. If you just want to find out how experienced property professionals evaluate deals and do the deal analysis, it's great. If you just like uh, being a fly on the wall, watching how uh, creative deals are actually done and structured, it's absolutely must watch. Now, if you miss, we're on series five at the moment, which shows on Sky in, I don't know when, but in the next uh, couple of months or so. But you can binge watch series one to four on our website. It's a, it's a free on-demand service. It's propertyelevator.tv. So if you want to write that down or go on it on your phone, you can sign up for free. It's propertyelevator.tv. Sit down with a cup of coffee and a bacon sarnie and binge watch the whole lot. Um, you, learn a, you learn a lot about how this sort of stuff is done. I want to tell you a little bit about another event. We're holding a very, very special uh, conference on Sunday, which is the Property Elevator Live Conference. It's taking place at the Sheraton in Heathrow. It's a one-day event. And the reason why we're holding this conference is because the property market is going through massive change. Next year, we'll see a market that most people haven't seen for at least two decades. Uh, so it is going to be a completely different time, a time to pivot, a completely different time to change. Whatever you're doing right now, it simply won't work in 2023. And that's what this conference is focusing on, how that market is changing and the strategies you're going to need to keep on top of your game. So we're going to have keynote presentations from all the angels on the show, uh, to talk about how they're changing their game in 2023. There's going to be a lot of networking. Uh, we've got some great sponsors as well for the event. Now, this event is actually sold out um, for Sunday. But what we decided was because we're coming here today, uh, and we know that all you guys may not have heard about this special event and uh, will be wanting to get yourself a place, we kept aside 10 places for this Sunday conference to offer to people today. It's basically £149. We feed your mind um, with information and tactics and strategies of how you're going to succeed in property over this, these challenging times. And we'll also feed your stomach because there'll be a fantastic lunch and snacks and all the rest of it. And networking uh, with some very, very um, interesting people in the room. It's £149 for, the, for this one-day event. Uh, if they, now, I know people are going to want a book. Where do they go to? At the, uh, stage um, at the end. Do you want to um, do any of that now, or do we need to get straight into it, or should we do that I, I straight I think afterwards? we need to get started, okay. but if, if so, anyone's interested, you can purchase either on the website, or you can come up at the end of the, at the, end of the uh, panel and, and purchase a ticket. So just see us at the end, and we'll sort you out. We've got 10 places um, for people who are at this event who want to make it this Sunday. It's worth clearing your diaries for, quite frankly. I mean, if you've got anything booked, if you need to take your son to football or whatever, let him walk, take him, take himself. There's nothing more important than figuring out how you need to pivot your game in 2023. So uh, change your diaries around and come and see us at the end. So we're going to get on with it now. And uh, we've got three people uh, presenting deals to us. Uh, we've only had these packs just a couple of minutes ago. So what you're seeing is live. You're seeing how uh, John Howard, Paul Mahoney, uh, Nicholas Wallwork and myself evaluate and, 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 and an analyze these deals. Um, final thing I should say is uh, take some pics, you know, because you're at a um, 
relatively rare thing, which is these property elevator lives, take some pics and, and hashtag property elevator. And then we'll share them and all of that on our Instagram. So, um, uh, and, and if you look at me, I'll smile at you so it makes a good pic. I don't know whether John and Paul and Nick will be so friendly, but I'll certainly smile for your pics and post them on Instagram and hashtag property elevator TV. Now, I'm going to stop waffling on, and I'm going to first of all hand over to the show's lovely presenter, Elizabeth Warburton, who does a fantastic job. She's been with us for all five of the series, and she's going to be our host and compare for this afternoon. Please give a warm welcome for Elizabeth Warburton. Thank you, Ranjan, for such a lovely introduction. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Property Elevator Live. My name is Elizabeth Warburton, and as Ranjan said, I'm the host of the show. So today we have three live pitches for you. Now, I'm super excited about these ones because four months ago, we finished filming our last series. We're now in a totally different market to what that was four months ago. So I'm really interested to see where our angels are gonna go with their strategies, what they're looking at investing this year, and what they're looking at not investing in this year as well, more importantly. Um, we've got three people that have traveled all across the UK to get to us today. So please make sure when our pitchers come on the stage, you do give them a big warm welcome and lots of support. Now, without further ado, I'm going to get on with it, and I'm going to introduce our first angel to the stage. Please, can you put your hands together and give a warm welcome to Mr. Paul Mahoney. Am I here? No, you're there. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Paul Mahoney, as Lizzie uh, very kindly just introduced me. Uh, I'm the founder and chairman at Nova Financial Group. I'm also an experienced property investor and developer. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Next, we have Mr. Ranjan Bhattacharya. Please re welcome Ranjan. <laughs> no booing, John. We have to be nice today. <laughs> Ranjan, please tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do. Hi, everyone. I'm a property investor and developer for the last 30 years. I specialize in taking defunct commercial buildings and converting them into residential use. Um, we're under permitted development rights, and there's plenty of opportunities for that in 2023. Uh, I also am a YouTuber. I blog what we do and my commentary on property investing on my YouTube channel. We have 60,000 subscribers, put out a lot of videos each and every week. Woo. So just uh, YouTube, succeed in property, and sign up for that for free. Thank you. Thank you, Ranjan. And next, we have Mr. John Howard. Please welcome John. Thank you. Uh, John. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Howard. I've been a property developer and investor for over 40 years. And unlike other people on the stage today, I don't just do commercial or residential. Specialised. <laughs> I do all sorts of property developing. At the moment, I'm looking at a lot of distressed stock yeah. where other uh, developers have gone bankrupt and we, we buy them off the receiver, off the bank. Just, two, just done two deals in, in Scotland, very similar to that. Thank Excellent. You. Thank you, John. And then last, but certainly not least, please put your hands together for Mr. Nicholas Woolwork. Thanks, Lizzie. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet everyone. Nice Hello. Um, I'm a property investor, property developer of 20 years. Um, I run propertyforum.com. I run a new business called Wealth Labs, which is a oh, wealth what? community that's just launching. You guys don't even know about it, so you're Very excited, excited to hear it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And primarily, primarily, I'm a developer. Um, that's what I do, and I mentor people doing that. So looking Brilliant. forward to a bit of banter off John today. No doubt I'll get a lot of stick. So um, just don't listen to him. Excellent. Well, He's too old now. Shall we <laughs> get to our first country. pitch? <laughs> shall we get there? OK. okay. Let's uh, bring Greg first up to the stage. Please, everybody, can you put your hands together for Greg? Thank you so much, Greg, Great. for coming to Property Elevator today. Please, can you just tell everybody quickly who you are, what you do, and what you've brought for our angels today? Well, my name's Greg, and uh, I've brought along a commercial to residential opportunity for your consideration. John won't and, like uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
permit development. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. I've, uh, I'm originally from London, uh, but living in Wales, and the uh, property itself is actually in Kettering in Northamptonshire. Okay, excellent. Well, good luck. I'm going to leave you to pitch, and I'll see you in a little while. Thanks. Greg, thank you very much for coming all the way from Wales uh, today. Uh, let's uh, crack on and tell us all about this deal uh, as quickly as you can, please. Okay, thank you. And firstly, thank you very much to all of you for this wonderful opportunity. So, to get straight to it, I'm looking for 325,000. That's towards some towards the purchase, some towards the development of this uh, beautiful building in, in Kettering, Northamptonshire. And uh, the idea is to turn it into four flats. It was a, uh, a furnishing shop, and uh, I believe the flow of the building and where it's situated and everything else about it suits very well to becoming four flats. So the town itself, Kettering, Northamptonshire, in case you're not familiar, it's well known as a commuter's paradise. Uh, I think that's probably a phrase coined by estate agents. But it's about an hour by train to central London, 25 minutes by train to Leicester. Um, very well connected by road to uh, the M6, M1 corridors, uh, and east-west as well because of the A14. And uh, the property itself, like I say, it was a, a former furnishing showroom, so it's commercial use class E at the moment. Um, town centre location, so it's just five minutes walk to the high street, and it historically was two semi-detached houses, so it lends itself very well to being converted into the four flats. Floor, floor area is around 227 square metres, uh, which is about 2,400 square feet for those of you with a few more grandchildren than me. And uh, the accommodation potential spans across three floors in the building. It's been vacant since 2018. And uh, good transport links because there's a, a bus stop opposite, 15 minute walk to the train station. So the conversion, uh, four flats, that's my, my preferred route to go with this. Two, probably two times two bed, two times one bed. And it does qualify for class MA change of use. I have had a uh, planning feasibility study done on that. Um, the internal structure, like I say, the flow is, uh, it lends itself very well to becoming four flats um, uh, with minimal structural work. Potential for one internal beam, but the rest will just be simple, straightforward internal reconfiguration. The area is known for this. There are flat conversions in the area, um, lots of HMOs and that sort of thing in the area as well. My overall intention with this project is to buy, reconfigure, refinance, and then hold for long-term rental. Uh, but open to different ideas on that as well. OK. Greg, thank you very much. Uh, a very straightforward, simple deal to start us off, which is always good, especially if uh, Ranjan's going to start off commenting on it, which he is. So Ranjan, you, do you do any commercial or residential at all? Ah, I've been known to dabble. Shall we say I've been known to dabble? Um, very good pack. I like the way you presented your figures, by yeah. the way. I like the way you've broken down, um, which I thought was quite neat. Um, the cost per square foot of the building um, and the GDV per square foot of the building. And uh, I, I thought that, you know, it's a good breakdown. It's very easy to see yeah. um, what you're proposing. Um, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about your background to start with. Have you done any uh, conversion? Is this your first commercial to resi conversion deals? What sort yes. of stuff have you done? Yes, it is. So my property background, I have uh, done residential refurbs. Uh, so I've done a, the last thing I had, had was an HMO, um, and that was in Buckinghamshire, uh, which I've recently sold, and I'm looking to put it into to better use and hopefully turbocharge it into, into something a bit more profitable going forwards. I mean, the other thing I wanted to ask you about, because I think the feasibility of this is fine. I mean, it looks like something that will fit the Class MA template uh, for residential conversion. Um, your build costs, are, you're estimating around 50 grand a flat. Um, now, one of the things about this building, I mean, can people see that on the screen? Is it on the screen, the building? Yep. Yeah. Um, it's an older type building. So it looks like it's 1910, 1920s, which means the work involved to get to the new um, uh, particularly the EPC standards, because yeah. EP, for rentals you need EPC grade C, and those have just been upped. Um, 
So to get an old building to those sort of uh, standards is a lot more work, which means a lot more cost. So what I wanted to ask you was how you got to your 50 grand per flat estimate, because I think it's a bit light. OK, so I've spoken with a, a builder who's visited the property, had a look around, and obviously, without doing a full scheme of works, I can't be exact on that, but the figure he sort of plucked out of the air was, he said it will be more than 100 grand, but probably less than 150. Um, and so I've sort of put a bit of contingency into that and also done some research elsewhere on what other flat conversions have cost, and that's how I've come up with okay. my figures. I, I think one um, thing to say is a lot of builders just do not understand what needs to be put into it according to the current regulations. Ooh. Now, what I mean by that is, I mean, if to achieve the EPC, if you need um, a certain amount of insulation on the, on the perimeter walls, a certain amount of um, insulation in the floors and stuff like that, they don't really factor that in. They just look at it as it's a one-bedroom flat, kitchen, bathroom, flooring, they don't really the factor fit, in the fit some, of the, the yes, some of the hidden costs of meeting okay. the standards. Um, those are my comments for now. Have you finished? I think so. Paul? Yeah, OK. Um, am I, is my, my mic working? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? OK. Great. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> one question. So it mentions here that you're looking for investment of £325,000. Um, and that seems to be doing this development purchase and development in cash. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. I'll be putting in 100 grand of my own into okay. the project. Oh, I um, see. OK, so my question is, is there any reason we wouldn't finance at least the development or part of this? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I'm open to, yeah. to, to all options. Yeah, I suppose I'm just looking at it from the perspective of you can probably quite easily finance this at about 60%, which would mean that with your 100 grand, it would mean we would only need to put in about 100 grand. Yeah, so. I mean, I'm new to this space, yeah. and a big part of wanting to meet you guys is because, realistically, I want, I want some assistance along the way, and so yeah. I'm kind of looking for somebody experienced, someone seasoned in this, in this space, yeah. uh, rather than just somebody that I can go to for development finance or bridging yeah, or whatever. Enough. I suppose, you know, for, uh, from an investor's perspective, we're always looking to make our money go as far as possible, and therefore, if we can minimize the amount we're putting in, that tends to be the ideal scenario. Um, just a, something that Ranjan did touch on. So I think you've got the, the conversion at £76 a square foot. And that, that does right. also, you know, just to back up what Ranjan said, it seems light. It's about, about 90. Sorry? It's He's in, got it at about 90. It's in for 90. About 90 per square foot. £90 a square foot. £90 a square foot. Yeah. 76 it says there. That's mid case. Oh, okay. There's best case and worst case. Right. Yeah. So it's which figure you pick, I, I don't like all this mid case and worst case business, but there we go. Okay. No, sorry, you're right, Paul. I'm reading the purchase yeah. price. Sorry. Yeah. I, I'm more interested in the in the GDV, um, and you've got a range there from sort of 550 up to 590. Um, how much research have you done, and how many sort of local agents have you spoken to to get a really good feel of this? Because you're from Wales. Um, there's nothing wrong with investing in other towns, but you've really got to know the end market. You know, we're coming into a tricky period in the market at the moment. Um, you know, there could be a hit in the GDV by the time this gets developed and finished. We've got inflation on cost of development. So, you know, again, I, I echo the guys' comments on the, on the cost of building this is very, very light, especially at the moment. Um, but yeah, what sort of work have you done on the GDV? And second question, which is on GDV, have you considered splitting it to two houses? And what would that look like on the GDV? Yeah, well, just to your last point there, as far as two houses, that is another route that could be done. It was, historically, it was two houses. It was two exactly, yeah. semi-detached houses. On GDV, I have spoken with uh, one agent, one estate agent in the area, and that's sort of what I'm basing the mid-case figures on. Um, the other agent I've spoken to is the agent who's actually selling this mm. project, and so I've sort of taken his with a bit of a pinch of salt, but obviously Very his figures sensible. were higher yeah. when, I, when I spoke with him, and that's kind of how I've put, put GDV together. Yeah, well, you definitely need to speak to a few more agents. Um, you probably want to speak to a commercial valuer, potentially, and get an idea Sorry, for... Sorry, Nick. Can, you hang on Can we yep. turn up Nick's mic? Uh, it's, it's very weak. Is it weak? Sorry. 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 Can you hear me? Sorry. I can hear me. Yep. Um, yeah, no, you just maybe want to speak to a commercial valuer. Um, you know, if you are thinking of making an offer on this, doing a, a quick desktop commercial... Well, a quick desktop Rick's valuation, sorry, I should say, at the end, but do it with a proper surveyor rather than a state agent. 
someone that's going to be instructed by the bank to value it. That's really the only surefire way you're going to know what the GDV is um, and how, how the banks are valuing it. A lot of the banks at the moment are knocking, knocking things by 5%, 10% and telling the valuers to do that. So you've got to be really, really careful when you're looking at you know, putting your money into something that has got any level of development risk at the moment. don't want to put you off. I'm just saying you need to be really, really sure of these figures. So, is it my turn? Your turn. OK, great. <laughs> You've listened to the others. Now, now you know, you're going to listen to me, hopefully, and I'm going to listen to you. Everyone so, needs to get a if everyone wants to sleep, now's the time to do so, it. Uh, yeah, uh, so, listen, uh, this deal, have you been to Kettering very often? Yeah, so why Kettering? I spent a lot of time there when I was a kid because I've got lots of family so in the area. So you know area. the area. Great. Yeah. OK, so uh, Nicholas stole my, my uh, thunder a little bit because actually... You know, everyone's obsessed with doing flats. I'm off obsessed with done, doing flats. I've done thousands of them. But in something like this, where it was probably two semis, you know, putting it back into two houses is probably simpler than trying to do four flats. And you've got, all the, you've got less fire precautions. It's simpler. Um, and cheaper. Also, and cheaper. And also, you can sell this half done. So you can, you can literally split it up, put a staircase in either side, make it... So make, you know, make it mortgageable, but then you can sell them off as DIY mm. for people to, to do it as a DIY project if you want to. So that gives you a, another angle to the one, you, know, not, you just don't have to do the whole thing. You, so you've got three choices then. You can either get planning on it and sell it as it is. You can get planning and you can sell it through an auction like Auction House UK or somewhere like that. You can do that. The second thing you can do is do some of the work and sell it as a, as a DIY project for someone, or thirdly, you can do the whole thing, or fourthly, you can do one, not do the other. So you've got lots of options. At the moment, it's all about de-risking deals, because we don't quite know where things are going. It's all about de-risking, and, and mm. you've come with a, a good deal, um, but you haven't made it what I call deal fit. So to make it deal fit, Paul was spot on when he said, we probably only need to put in 100, 125,000. That makes it much more interesting to us than saying we've got to find £300,000. So you're on the right lines. I like it. Your bill costs are too low in my view. I don't like it when there's three options, low, medium and high. Because as an investor, what the bloody hell does that mean? Where mm, am I? Am, exactly. I? am I looking at the lowest, in which case the deal doesn't work? Am I looking at the highest, in which deal I think you're bullshitting us and you're not? You're, you've just done that for the right reasons or tried to do it for the right reasons. So am I going to take the middle figure? Mm, probably. So you, I always think you're best off to say, conservatively, this is what I think it's worth, and not this might be this, it might be that, it might be something else, personally. Okay. Others, I mean, Ranjan might think differently to that, and Paul, I don't know, and, and Nicholas, but for me, I want to know more definite. I want to know what you think you can sell yeah. them for. I might then take 10% off that or 5% off that to be safe, but at least I know where I am. But actually, it's something like this, John. This stock is very easy to value. Yes, you know, I agree. A flat in that town is going to be within five or ten thousand yeah. pounds for that spec. So there's no need for such a big oh, range. Thanks. So that's why I said you need to speak to more Appreciate agents that. to get a really accurate thanks. number there. Just okay. a question on, on some of what John and Nick just touched on. Do you know what a semi is worth in this area? Mm. <clears throat> I I don't offhand, no, but I, I can definitely find out. Okay. Okay. Just to your points there about the cash side of it, how much more cash would I need to bring to this to make it more attractive to you? Well, that's very interesting, All of it? isn't it? All of it? <laughs> <laughs> that's the obvious answer. Realistically. <laughs> and then we'll just consult with you and take half the profit. <laughs> I mean, going back to my point that I raised before, I think it'd be madness to fund this solely in cash. Yeah. And, and, and if we're yeah. financing at 60%, it's only about 100 grand each. Um, and, and if therefore, if your numbers are correct, after f sort of you know, putting in some, some funding costs, the profit is quite healthy, or, or especially on the cash. So, In terms of rental value, what have you got in for the rents in total per month? I think it was 2,900. 20? 20, 2,900. 20? Uh, what does that mean? 3,000 a month? Yeah, 3,000 per, okay. per calendar month. Okay. I've got a little bit of bad news for you. Um, in as much that um, these valuers now on buy-to-lets and things like that are tending to be very cautious. So they're tending to value stock at 8.5% yield quite often, not 65 which it used to be, because the market and so on. So that sometimes makes the refinancing of these deals harder. 
I'm not saying you can't do it. You may not get all your cash out, um, but Paul may have a, Paul's much more of an expert on buy to lets than I'll ever be. So, Paul, have you got a view on that or not? I mean, even if, if the 570 is right and you run it at 70%, um, finance, which should be okay. Because they 125% cover, don't they? Yeah. So rather than the 75%, lower it down to 70, you're still getting out just under 400. So it's, you get your cash back. Okay. Okay. So are we ready to make a decision? Bear in mind, remember, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that we've only seen these packs literally for five minutes before the show started, literally. Okay? So it's all about making quick decisions and, 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 and evaluating the situation very, very quickly. So who wants to go first? Oh, no one. I'll, 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 I'll do a, a Come on, for Nicholas. you. You know, if you're no prepared Dutch, to put no money glory. in. Come on. You know, if you're looking for an experienced partner that's prepared to put. I think you might. If you've got the money to, sorry. If you've got the money to do it, and you just want an experienced partner, any one of us would be good for you. What I'll give you is all oh. my time needed, as much help as you need, access to my entire power book of contacts planning consultants, financiers. I'll help you finance this, because I think we need to finance it. Um, and we'll go 50-50, which is better than what you've asked for. OK, appreciate that. So that's an offer, is it? That's I'm not sure offer. what it is, to be honest with it's you. It's called 50-50, John. 50-50, and how much are you putting in? Well, he puts his money in. I put in the experience. And more, and more time than, you, than you've got. It's called Property Elevator. The point of the show is that we put the funds in, and we put the majority of the funds in, half the funds in. It's not the, sh the show isn't you don't put anything in. I can put in money if I want to. But I don't. <laughs> or is it the cost because of Because he's just offered to put it in, so why yeah, would I want to put money in prices. as well? See if you're short of money or something now. I'm really, really short of money, John. Just, just yeah. to clarify. <laughs> okay, so, so the offer so far, which is good to get an offer for early on. Uh, for I normally Nicholas, wait till the end, so you Nicholas, should be you normally pleased wait till the that end. I've yeah, offered sneak, first for a change. You normally sneak it in at the end. So the offer, <laughs> the offer is that you put all the money up and he'll put the expertise up. Yeah. But a lot more time. You know, there might be, might be other angels on the panel that won't give you as much of their time. I'm prepared to do that. And I think that's a big thing to consider yeah, okay. when accepting we've had, an offer. Nicholas, we've had the sales pitch, thank you. But who would like to go next? Paul? Paul, do you fancy to go next? Yeah, okay. Um, go on, then. I will one better, Nick. I think this needs about 160 grand cash with finance. Total. Total. Yeah. Um, Greg, you, is, it's Greg, isn't it? Sorry. Yep. Yeah, sorry, Greg. You, so he you doesn't even know your name. He's forgotten <laughs> your name, Greg. Just remember that. You mentioned that you have 100 to put in. I'll put in the 60 and we'll split it. Okay. So if, this is all pending me being able to you know, fund it from elsewhere effectively, isn't it? I'll help you get I'll the see finance. Your debt. We'll, we'll, we can all sort we'll the debt out we'll, for we'll, you. Anybody, any of us can do that. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry about okay. that. You haven't heard the best bit yet, probably, so hang on. Don't go jumping in with any silly decisions before you've heard from Ranjan. It's out. You know now where it is? Yeah, I know where Ketering is. Bear, bear yeah, in mind, Ranjan's fair. never been north of the M25. No, he probably doesn't know where Ketering is. There's Kettering no clue is. where this is. They all have no seen that. I mean, uh, it's, it's outside the, the M25. Scotland. It's where I'll do everything these days. Well, you've been to Leicester twice now, <laughs> so let's not get overexcited. <laughs> all over the place. Right. Right. What do you okay. want to do? We've got um, about two minutes left, so you need to get on with it. You need to get on with it. Right. <clears throat> I think the, uh, the best thing for this property is to make it into two houses and sell them on as opposed to yeah. rent them out. I agree. Um, mainly because I think the, the buy-to-let strategy uh, and the, and the, uh, hasn't factored in an inevitable rise in interest rates at the next Bank of England meeting. And that's going to further um, upset the yep. exit when you look to refinance you know, next year and that kind of stuff. And as selling of two houses, that should work. Now, the thing is, I would hazard a guess, I don't know, but I would hazard a guess that the GDVs of both the two houses combined would probably be not that far off what you've got as 570 for your mid case. Um, is that the case in that area? Yeah, I, I could imagine that being the case. Because yeah. if you're looking at... Um, they're quite the big as well, actually, Ranjan. So, that again? They're quite big houses. They're, they're the big building. houses. Okay. Big. And the other question is, is there land to the rear to give those houses a garden? Well, the, 
the fact that they'd have to be townhouses, no gardens, no parking, that's the main thing that was putting me off going the houses route, to you, be honest. Your struggle, if there's no garden, you're struggling. Okay. Yeah. We there assume there was something at the back. Nothing at the back at all? A, a courtyard, maybe call it a bin store. Um, to, to the Ranjan calls that a big garden. He lives okay. in. He, li- <laughs> he, li- he lives in, in okay. suburbia. Park. Um, I, I, I'll probably declare myself out because I, I would do it if, if if it could be converted into two nice family-sized houses because yeah. I think that would be the safest exit. If it's got a problem providing them with a garden, I'm not sure whether that okay. would make it. Um, okay. That great. Okay. Let Thanks. me tell you where Thanks, I am. Ranjan. Let me tell you where I am. Um, I sort of, I don't like agreeing with Ranjan, but I'm going to have to sort of agree <laughs> with him this time, and in as much that um, if it had a garden, I would say two houses all day long, safer, safer, more popular, and so on. The fact that there's no garden, you know, makes them, if you get permission to do it, makes it harder to sell. And remember, if there's something that you can't change in a deal, in a development, that's going to cause a problem in terms of selling, then don't do it. If you can't control it, if you can't sort it out, don't do it. You've got to do, you're going to have to do flats, uh, especially going forward. You know, you could, you know, a year ago, probably, you could sell a house with a very tiny garden or no garden hardly at all for money, and, uh, and you could sell it. Now, people are going to have more choice because there's going to be more on the market. They've got more choice. They don't need to buy a house with no garden. So for that reason, and that reason only, and the fact that I think that your bill costs are too cheap on the flats, I'm going to decline. But you're very investable, you're very professional, and I think you've done a really, really good good job today. You've got two offers. One is derogatory in my view, but that's up to you. (laughs) So... You've got two offers. <laughs> take 30 seconds to think about you can what take you want no to do. Money and or make money. A, and make what do you a, want? And make a decision. So the offers are effectively the same, one with money, one without. Yeah. I suppose. Yep. Well, I guess I'd be I'd be a fool not to not to follow up on your offer, Paul. So. Great. That's that's the problem with going first. <laughs> we'll talk after. Well done. Well done. Well done, Greg. Good Thank you. Good pitch. Thank you. Very good. Very Congratulations. Good. Round of applause, please, for Greg. What a fabulous first deal. Should we get on to our second? I thought that was a terrible deal. I didn't get it, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like always... char- he's like a spoiled child. He's, he's like this when we do the recordings. You know, he's like a spoiled child. If I go first, I'm never going to get it. You Listen, know, there's always... Trying to be cheesy you can't always, you can't always have your own way. The, the last time I go first. You can't always have your own way, Nicholas. There's always next time. There's always, there's always next time. Deal, okay. There's always another deal. Yes. So we've got a fantastic pitch number two now for you. Please, everybody, give a warm welcome to Tallulah. Oh, Tallulah. Tallulah. Thank you for joining us today, Tallulah. Thank you. Please just tell everybody a little bit about yourself and the deal that you've brought today. Hello, um, thank you for having me here. Um, My name's Tallulah and I run a holiday let management company based in Kent. And I'm here today to pitch a property that I think would be a really good um, holiday let in Canterbury. Um, Yeah, and I'm very excited to tell you about it. Brilliant, well, I'm gonna leave you to it. Best of luck. Crack on. Okay. Um, So today I'm pitching um, a two-bedroom apartment in Canterbury um, in this very prestigious building. Um, I already manage the whole floor below, which is a very successful holiday let, which makes, I think, 41,000 net profit a year. Um, So the floor above is two bedrooms, Um, it's already pretty renovated, it's on for 290 but we've had good authorisation from the estate agent that the seller will take 275, so that's um, what I'm asking for today. Um, And what I'd like to do is um, to spend 20k doing it up and um, making it into a beautiful holiday let. Um, and then letting it out through my company. Um, I think that's, oh, um, I've got my figures, hold on. Um, 
So um, what I think it could make is 56,600 gross a year um, and a net profit, well, an average net profit of £33,918.20 based off an 80% occupancy rate. Um, so, Angels, if you want to see this deal through and if you'd like a hands-off investment into this property or if you'd like me to source further properties to increase your portfolio, speak to me. My name's Talila at Idyllic Retreats. <laughs> Um, can I just say that this lady is 18 years old. I first met her when she was 13 or 14? 14. 14. And I, I'm so proud today wow. because um, you've come here uh, four years later. I, I knew you would be aspir I knew you were aspirational even then and that you would, you would really start your own business so on. You've done a fantastic job. So whatever Thank happens you. today, congratulations to you. Thank yeah. you. Congratulations. Okay, now we've got, we got over the nice bits. Now it's business. Yeah. So <laughs> That was nice, John. That was nice, John. Doesn't now happen we, very often. Thank you. So, um, okay. Um, if you don't mind, I'll sort of go first, if that's okay, for a change. Go for it. Um, so, the, the, the purchase price is how much? Um, it's on for 290 Yep, but what do we I've buy it for? 275 Okay, and do you want me to fund all the whole purchase price? Yes. You do? Okay. And the re so we're going to be in, so with the work, we're going to be in for £300,000, yeah? I think it'll be £20,000 to do yeah, it. Yeah, well, let's say 25, let's say, let's say we're in for 300000 okay? Okay. And on 300000 the net after everything is going to be about 30-odd thousand a year. 34. Yeah, yeah, letting it out, yeah. How confident are you on the 80% occupancy rate? Very confident. Because I already manage the um, whole floor below, yep. I feel um, I'm completely booked to the point where I'm turning down bookings. Canterbury gets, I think, a million visitors a year. Um, you've got the um, parents from the university staying. Yep. You've got all of the attractions around Canterbury. It's a very popular place to come yep. and visit. So um, I, I think that I, I don't see it as kind of a competition between the two lets. I see it as opening up more of a market, which is why I think it's a good holiday let investment. Okay, good answer. Paul, would you like to start or carry mm, on? Even? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so sorry. Just, just so I can get clear on these figures. So, two seventy-five purchase, about twenty, thirty grand refurb, yeah. um, and GDV of three fifty. So about a fifty grand uplift. Yes. In value. Yeah. And. Is the idea to keep this and refinance it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So if um, you do refinance it for 350, then yeah, you get I think 50k profit, um, and then it will be the idea is that my property would then let it out, which then you can expect your net profit a year to be 33,000. Where, where, okay. where do you get your GDV from? Is that from a, a done-up flat in that area? The one that I manage below is 380. So okay, that's that where I've kind of got it from. Is yes. That an, okay, so let's work out. So what are you proposing? Are you proposing that we buy the property yes. and then you manage it? Yes. Basically. Yes. Okay. And, and own it 50-50. Say again? And own it 50-50. And own it 50-50. So and 50 share 50. the profit. Is that right? Share, share the, the red. Yeah. 50, 50 as well. Yeah. Right, okay. Mm. Now, when there's silence, it's unusual, and it normally means people are just mulling things over. And remember, we've only just seen this five minutes beforehand. We saw three together, so that's why we're mulling things over. Nicholas's little brain's working overtime, isn't Nicholas? Um, uh, yes, because I there left my phone over there, and I can't calculate the... the, the the yield Nicholas, what a, you do some service accommodation, don't you? I have done. I don't anymore. Yes, I are, didn't are like you, doing it. Aren't you very good at it? Well, it's not about being good at it. It's a hell no. of a lot of work. You've got to treat it as an independent business, which, which is, you clearly on. are. You've got a great um, partner. But I, I'd rather do my own investments more hands-off. Okay. So it's just a, it's kind of an investing style. If you're going to go service accommodation, you've got to go full on into the management. You've got to set up a whole infrastructure, a whole business but, but around that. The great thing I like about this is that that's already done for us. Oh, exactly. That's and why. I, I mean, she could the be last great thing partner. I want to do is be messing around with service accommodation. To be honest with you, you know, it's not my bag. However, if you've got someone inspirational mm. to, who's doing all that for you, that makes a huge difference. 
And if you look at the pack that um, Taluna has given us, it's, it's so professional, it's amazing. It's hard, um, it's hard to see, but I don't know I what's mean, on screen, but her interior design, the way she designs I mean, the rooms wow. is, is incredible. Yeah. Very impressive. It's really, really amazing. So. Thank you. Ranjan, what are your thoughts? You've got service accommodation, or in your case, they're bed sits, aren't they? No, I do not. <laughs> well, four people per bed sit as well, <laughs> yeah. isn't it, John? I, I, I don't I think do he, I think he rents them at, at, at for the day and the night, so he gets double. Ah. No, yeah, so, day uh, and night. Th th those are by the hour. They were the days, weren't they, Ranjan? By the hour. Those, <laughs> those are by the hour, those ones. <laughs> Okay. Um, so serv uh, service accommodation. Okay. So I think the one thing that's that is interesting is that you've already got capacity in that building, yeah. and you are turning people away. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely a good sign. Yeah. There's uh, definitely a market. Definitely okay. A market. Uh, the other ones in the building. Do you own those as well? No. So Just they're all let out. Are um, those under separately. management? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Um, I think I might go, if everyone's happy, Paul, should I, oh, do you want me to, oh, yeah. if I can go first, would you mind? That'll make okay? it easier for us to um, better okay, it, yes. Because then you can just outbid me or whatever you normally do, <laughs> uh, just to spoil things. Yeah. So, I've already said um, how much I admire you. Um, I don't know much about the service accommodation, really. Uh, I do... I've got some holiday, I've converted some of my stock to holiday lets, uh, and my stepdaughter runs it all. I don't have anything to do with it, thank God. I would be a disaster if I was involved, I'm sure. Um, whatever you do in property, you have to have a passion for it, because if you haven't got a passion for it, you're not going to do it very well. And that might be, you know, you might be someone who wants to renovate list of buildings, fantastic. It might be, you know, you love doing service accommodation, but you must have a passion for it. And my problem with this deal is I don't have a passion for service accommodation um, at all. Um, but I really like you, and that puts me in a bit of a dilemma because I, I like working, obviously, with inspirational people. Um, I think... I'm concerned about the 80% occupancy rate. I know what you're saying. That's an average. So I know. That's Minimum. I know what you're saying, but that's quite ballsy. With our holiday lets, we're working on about 30 weeks a year. Um, having said that, with 30 weeks a year, we think we can double the net amount we get than we would on a short old tenancy by having it as, as holiday accommodation. Now, what you're suggesting, because it's such a lovely area and everything else, that is much higher. Yeah. So we're at about 50%, you're at 80%. 80% concerns me. Um, and if I'm buying a property that I want to rent out and it's worth 350 when it's done and we've got 20 grand to spend on it, I want to make a profit on that in case it doesn't work and then I can sell it at a profit. So I want to de-risk it. Everything I look at, I want to de-risk. People think property developers are big risk takers. On occasions, if the market's doing, you know, if the market's go doing that, maybe you can take a few more chances. But on the whole, I de-risk everything. And to de-risk this deal, this is what I would say. If you can buy it for 250, things are tough at the moment, yeah? Yeah. If you can buy it to 250, and you can convince me by the, the, the uh, figures for the flat below, mm. then, then I will make you an offer of 250, um, I'll, put the, I'll put the money up like you want mm -hmm. um, and I'd want 75% of the deal you get 25% ouch that was mean John that's life I don't think that's that mean. wasn't and, nice John uh, and, 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 and you got that because he likes you yeah imagine the people he doesn't <laughs> like <laughs> don't know what someone else would have got he's going to get you to all the work and take 100% of the deal well, at the moment, it's the, the, it's the first offer. And sometimes the first offer is the best offer, by the way. So let's see what the others say. Paul. <laughs> OK. Um, yeah, look, I was thinking a similar thing to John. Just done some numbers on it. Um, it's like a son to me here. It's like a son. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Thanks. <laughs> now, similar to the last deal, I, I, I don't see any need or reason to finance things cash. No. I think it's a waste of money. Um, so. 
if, if I was to do it, we, we would finance it at about 60% to purchase it. Yep. Out of all, all costs, you know, all in, about the 300,000 that you need. Um, so it requires about 120,000 cash. Now, after the work, because obviously the uplift is relatively minimal because it's a light refurb. Mm -hmm. After the work, there'll be about 90 grand left in it. So the way I look at that is that's my 90 grand that I've put in. Yep. Based upon your figures and also based upon remortgaging it at about 7 or 8% because that's about what you'll pay in today's market for a short-term let. That's about a 10% net yield on the cash left in, assuming everything goes to plan. Now, if we were to split that, that's only 5% on my cash, which isn't very good. Mm. So I'd actually just written the same figure as what John said. I'd be willing to do it, but only at 75, 25, because that's a 7.5% yield on my yeah. cash left in. And is that on a purchase Thank price you. of 275? That is on the purchase price of 275. Oh, okay. Better than me. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's funny that. Yeah. Better than me and better looking than me. So, <laughs> Ranjan. Um, serviced accommodation is not my bag. Oh, so, uh, you're having a laugh. What? <laughs> it's not your bag. It's not my bag. I thought you did lots of it. So I think uh, no, John and Paul has put two good offers on the table. So I'll, 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 but Ran Jane, genuinely, I thought you did service accommodation. No, no, no. no. You don't? No, no, no. He does service office accommodation. Oh, oh I do sorry. serviced offices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I misunderstood you. I do apologise. Um, okay, so... I was wondering where you got that from. Yeah, serviced offices. I thought you just had a load of bedsits. Um, so you've got two offers. You've okay. got me at 250. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you've got Paul on the same deal, 7525. At but he will he will if he will go to 275 on the purchase price. Okay. So you've got two offers. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been yet. I'm just re. You're trying to just, stop me talking again. Right? No, I'm or, just or I'm just saying she's got two offers so far. Then you've got Nicholas to come. Okay, well, I'm going to make it easy for you guys. Um, just so you get a deal today, John, I'm going to step away from this one. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I am really, really like you. I think you've done an incredible job. Yeah. Thank um, you. You know, the interior design that you do on these apartments is incredible. Mm -hmm. I love your design eye. Mm -hmm. um, I had no idea you were 18. I mean, it's absolutely mind-blowing you. what you've <laughs> managed to achieve. It just shows Thank anyone you. out there that's trying to get into property yeah. that literally anyone can do it with the right mindset, taking action, going for your goals, absolutely yeah. inspirational. Um, I'm actually working with Craig, who, Craig, can you stand up quickly and wave? Craig was on series four of Property Elevator. Uh, we invested in his business. We own 40% of it. Um, we've bought a plot together at the moment that we're developing out. Um, but we've also offered on a hotel in, um, in Berkshire. It's a 17, 18 bed hotel, which mm -hmm. we want to keep a C1 and run a service accommodation. So you've turned up today like a shining light. So although I don't want to invest in this because I think it'll tie up too much of my money, it's not in my area. Mm. I'd be concerned it's, it's not the right thing. It's, it's a little bit too small. Um, okay. I'd be very interested in uh, having you to come and look at that and see if yeah. that's something you might want to work we'll with us on. have a chat, okay. definitely. Okay. Thank you. I knew that was going to happen. So, two Sorry. offers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm at 250. Yep. Paul's at 275. It's, the choice is yours. So you want to buy it at 250? I won't pay more than 250 for it. No. Okay. And same thing. So I'll do it up, refurbish yep. it, and then let it out. Yep. Okay? And, and you're for 275 I mean, obviously, we want to buy it as cheaply as possible. Yeah, um, I understand But that. I, I, I think based upon the numbers, it, it works at 275 mm -hmm. um, Mostly on the ba not so much on the basis of adding much value to it, but more mm -hmm. so on the basis that you're already managing the flat below it, you know what it's going to rent for, yeah. and the net yield it's providing on a yearly basis is pretty decent yeah. based upon that. Yeah, um, and so we'll, be, we'll do it up all for you, and then my company will let it out. Yeah. Okay. Um, the only th the, the thing that's in my head is that it's already on the market for 290, which I think's a lot for it, because there's n nothing you know, that's not really done up as well. Um, I can't see that the seller's going to accept 250. So, um, Paul, I'd love to go with your deal. So, Excellent. fantastic. Hey. Thank you. Well done, Paul. Brilliant. Well done, Paul. Really. Thank, 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 thank you very much. Fantastic. That's well two done, deals everybody. in a row, Paul. That's two deals in a row. You need to add up those what you've spent so far, you do. I don't know. Paul's, uh, Paul's paying for dinner, though. 
Paul's paying for dinner. John yeah. done. Well, we know Ranjan won't. I'm not being rude, but he never does. No, I'm having the champagne. Well, he's caviar. doing bed sits, I think. He throw, he throw Saturday night. You're buying dinner, aren't you? <laughs> Something like that. You're buying dinner for 20 <laughs> yeah, people. Yeah, there's a local 25 people there's so far, 27 people. The corner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you that's there. two deals to Paul so far. So he's doing all right, isn't he? He's doing, he's doing, doing okay. Okay. Two, yeah. Right. Well, Tallulah, that was absolutely that fantastic. I think she deserves just one more round of applause yeah, yeah. for that. It really was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Okay, so we have our Brilliant. third and final pitch of the day. Please, can you put your hands together and welcome to the stage, Peter. Hello, Peter. Hi. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Please just tell everybody who you are and what you do and what you've brought for our angels today. Radio. My name's Peter Mill. Um, I'm Managing Director of Purpose Property and I've got 30 years' experience in property developing and investing. So and I like really simple deals because I'm very simple. So do, I. so do we all. Lovely. So do we all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to leave you to pitch. Lovely. Best of luck. Thank you very much. So, Yep, crack on. Right, so what we've, got on, here, what we've got here is the former um, Lloyds Bank in Shanklin on the Isle of Wight and um, being sold as part of um, the divestion of um, banks, branches all over the United Kingdom. It's got two flats above the banking hall and um, it's, we've got an offer accepted at 185,000. We've had a RIC survey just come through and it's worth 220 on the RIC, on the RIC survey. GDV is 340,000. It needs a light refurb on the flat directly above the, sh above the um, bank itself and the bank needs a light refurb as well to convert to a shop. Uh, potential profits around 88,000. A refurb is uh, 35,000. The cost per square metre on the purchase price is a stonking £740 per square metre, which is insane because you can't build it for that. So I think we found a good deal. The only problem is I need some money. Okay. There we are. Right, Peter, thank you very much for that very brief um, and succinct uh, explanation. So, who would like to go first? I'll start off. I just want to clarify a couple of things about the proposal. Yeah. So, yep. what you're seeking is um, a loan. Is that right? Ideally, a loan, yes, please. So, you want us to lend you £138,750, 75% loan to value yep. at 8%? Correct. Um, and that's basically our involvement? That would be ideal for me. I'm sure it would, Peter. It's <laughs> not really okay. for you. I'm um, sure it would be for us. I've, but I've done joint ventures in the past, and you're a lovely man, Ranjan, and I, lo I love your podcast, but it, they've all been disasters. Well, you haven't done them with any of us. So, no, I haven't. Uh, it could be uh, a bigger disaster. <laughs> <then. laughs> um, Pick the wrong people. I think, um, look, speaking as an investor, yeah. um, you know, banks are completely different. You know, the way the banking system works, fractional reserve, they can just invent money out of thin air and lend yeah. it out. But with us lot, it's real money. Mm. And with in real inflation running at probably 18%, to put up £138,000 for an 8% fixed return, yep. um, it's, it's losing money straight away. So I'm just wondering how you square that investor, angel investor circle. Um, I, I have been talking to other people and they're happy to lend money at 8% yeah. at the moment. Okay. It's going to go up, obviously, but at the moment it's at 8%. So I, I can work with that. The figures work. The figures just, work at 10%. Just speak up a little bit, Sorry. Peter. Yeah. The figures work at 10%. It's not a, not a, the percentage isn't that important. The important okay. thing for me is to get this deal because it's, it is it's a stonking deal, even though it's on the Isle of Wight. When you say, yeah. that, that's a really good point. That was going to be my first question, is even though it's on the Isle yeah. of Wight, that, that's something that puts me off because it's a small population small rental, small yeah. buyer market. Um, why, did it, why, did, why have you chosen the Isle of Wight? Um, it's cheap. Because, um, but there's I'm a reason why it's cheap. Yeah, but I'm based in Southampton. A similar kind of deal like that in Southampton would be north of 450,000 to buy it. Yeah, but that's not a reason to buy something because it's cheap. Uh, uh, it, it, is, it is and it isn't. I, I know the island. I've, I've done deals okay, on the island before. That's what I want to hear. Yeah. So yeah. Why, why is it cheap? What you know, convinced me of the, the rental demand, if you want to keep it, or the sales demand? What, what is that kind of okay. demand like? Um, the market is, 
I'll be perfectly honest, it's, it's a bit flat because it's, it's, the, it's the island. But there is, there is a, a continual purchasing and rental. There's about 140,000 people live on the island. In the Shanklin Sound down area, about 20,000 people. Strangely enough, they all need somewhere to live. And it, it, it does work. Yeah, I'm not, I don't feel convinced that it's a bit flat is, is inspiring me well, for the market. It's in, but, but, but Nicholas, it's, it's, it's being honest, you know, it's being honest. Um, yep, can I, well, can I give you? He's honest. Can yeah. I give you some good news, Peter? I like good news. Right, I've got flats in Shanklin in the Isle of Wight. Ta -da! Ta -da! I mean, so, <laughs> that's the first thing. John's so, always got a party. Trick. And I've had them 30 years, and I've been to visit them once. So it just shows you you don't need to keep going to look at property, do you? So uh, rent them out, five flats. Don't ask me the address because embarrassingly I couldn't, can't remember it. But anyway, I promise I own them. So. Um, Shanklin, nothing wrong with Shanklin, the Isle of Wight, it's fine, it's a, okay? ball, it's a pain in the ass to get to, I went once over the ferry, it's a real pain to get to. Was it horrible, that's why you didn't go No, back? it's not horrible at all. I'm just it, is, it is a pain in the ass, it took me four hours to get there last yeah, Friday, it, it's, it's so it's from great. Southampton. But I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to have to go very often. So hang on, okay, the market's flat, it's a pain in the ass to go to, there's only yep. 100,000 yep. people live yep. there, it's Absolutely. cold, windy, rainy. All, yep. all those, yep. Nicholas, uh, are good reasons as to why you may want to buy there, because no one else does. So. Okay. I don't have a problem with that. Right. Okay. It's got uh, the largest number of sunny days in United Kingdom anywhere. It's got so. Be worth. It's got the highest number of sunny days in United Kingdom there you anywhere go. on the island. Every day is a sunny we day. We found a reason to invest in this deal. I've got, reason reason. To invest. I've got another reason. Paul will like that because he's used to the sun in Australia. I've it's, just. Do you hear that, Paul? The sunniest spot in the whole of the I've, UK. <laughs> I've just bought another Lloyd's Bank in Southwold in in, uh, in Suffolk. Um, as well. So I've got no problem buying Lloyd's Banks and I've yeah. got no problem um, going to the Shanklin in the Isle of Wight. Yeah. My problem is what you want. So mm. if I'm going to do the deal, I'm not gonna, I don't want to be lending money. What I want to do, I want half the profit. Oh, that sounds painful. So, <laughs> so are we going to... That's very painful. So on the basis that right. you've come here wanting a loan, yep. um, and I... I'm not a money lender, a lender, so I want my money to make a lot more than 8%, so, or 10%, whatever you're offering. Yeah. So, what deal can we do, Peter? We need to make an offer, I think. Well, the, 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 the profit on the deal is about 88,000. Okay, that's, that's told me exactly all I need to that, know. Yeah, right, that, they, well, Peter, you don't need to say any more to me. <laughs> Ranjan? <laughs> no, I'm okay for now. I've, Paul? Okay. Yeah, so. So total cost, so, so 185 purchase, is that right? Sorry, can't hear 185,000 pounds is the purchase price? Correct. Costs of about 45,000 pounds? And on the refurbs, 35,000, what, yeah. What's the, what's the price, for, what's the cost per square foot of the refurb? Uh, 233 pounds a square metre. Now that sounds meter. cheap. How much, can you hold the mic up a little sorry, bit? Sorry, it, it sounds cheap. It's super cheap, but it's a light refurb. And I use, po I use the best Polish builders in the south coast. Okay. And they're cheap. Because oh, it's, it's already a flat, right? There's, yeah, there's uh, two flats upstairs, a uh, flat oh, okay, on top. Right. So it's not a conversion. Yeah, okay, it's already converted. No. Okay. Um, I mean, why do you need us? You can borrow this money at 8% from the um, bank. I need 138,750 quid. Yes. Simple. Um, now, perhaps you can't borrow 75%. You can't quite borrow that amount, maybe. Yeah. But you can borrow close to it. From a bank, or, or do you know? How, I'd, I'd rather deal with, with people who understand yeah. business and property business as opposed to the bank who hasn't got a clue. Yeah, I suppose so. But if we're offering our expertise and yep. and our money, yep. we, we want much more than the bank wants. Absolutely, I yeah. fully um, understand. Which is I a lot more well. than eight percent. I mean, there are some pretty good bespoke lenders out there. Our sponsor is Crowd Property, and they will look at a deal like this. Potentially. Crowd Property will look at this all day long. So, yeah, I no, just yeah. think you've got to be a bit more generous, Peter. You're you're you. I think you need to be a bit more generous. You're like one or two on the panel here. I'd like to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, where are we with it? Anyone want to go first? Yeah, I mean, I'm out. Uh, I don't think... Um, I mean, I think this has been packaged completely wrong for presenting it to, yeah. to, to me anyway. I agree. Um, and for that reason, I, I don't think there's an alignment of thinking. And therefore, I'm, it's not for me. That's okay, a very nice you. way of saying no. That's fine by me. Yep. I get no quite a lot. Grand Jam? <laughs> no, I agree. I would have offered a restructure along the lines that I like, but I don't mm. really invest offshore, so for that offshore, reason. Offshore, that's funny. <laughs> I know. 
can I, can I just say, when I bought these flats in the Isle of Wight 30 years ago, my brother was, thought it's very funny to say that I, uh, the reason I bought them, I thought it was an offshore, you know, it, it was an offshore <laughs> deal, if you like. It, wasn't, it was a tax haven. And I yeah. knew it wasn't a tax haven. I knew that's Jersey, by the way, or the Isle of Man. Anyway. So, you got um, confused with the, which, which island you bought on. <laughs> don't be rude. I bought the, uh, and the interesting thing, I bought these after the auction. After the auction. I'm still buying things after the auction now. Right. Nicholas. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think you know where I'm going to go. Clearly, it's not for me. Um, I don't want to lend money to anyone. Um, I want to do deals and make good profit and right. build a long-term business partner. Uh, it doesn't seem like you're up for that kind of relationship. Perhaps you've been burnt before, but as we said, maybe we're the wrong people. Um, you didn't convince me on the Isle of Man as a great place to invest. The, Isle, to... the Isle of Man probably is. I'm oh, sorry, Isle of Wight. <laughs> sorry, he's, he's got me confused now. Um, the Isle of Wight, you've not convinced me. You know, yeah. if, you've, if you come in with stats and numbers and um, you know, some research from the agents, some property data off some of the websites and gone, it's the best place because of these reasons, yeah. that's what you need to do to get investment, Peter. You, know, you yeah. don't come in and go, well, the market's a bit flat. It's a complete pig to get to. It's four I'm and a half hours. Being honest, to be fair, being honest. Being, I quite like that because he's actually, you know, when you, when, you, when you go and see an investor or a joint venture partner, you're far better to be honest about it. If you're too sunny about it, too ballsy about it, you know, they're going to see through. We're all going to see through that. All of you would see through that. Well, what's the one so reason? I think, to be fair to Peter, he's come in here and he's been genuine about what it is and he's fair been enough. genuine about, you know, the area and so on. I don't, uh, okay, I don't knock that, Nicholas, Point personally. made, point made. What, what is, you know, he's not given me one compelling reason to want to lend him money to do this deal where, like Ranjan said, is inflation is higher than the, the interest I'll be getting. I'll be losing money. So might as well put my cash in the bank and leave it sat there for the year. So you, you wouldn't no get 8% in the bank, not quite yet. You get, you get about 4.9% you. You in the you bank. You can't put it in control. the bank. It's okay. shut down, and that's why they're oh, selling right. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so right. you put it literally and in the bank. And there's no yeah. money left in the bank. <laughs> okay, bank is, so, is ruined. Peter, so, all, all I want to say so just finish my point. Summarising all of that, when investing, as I'm sure some of the experienced investors in the room will, will know, you've got to have various exit options. The biggest issue this has got, it's got no exit options. It's got one exit option. No, it's got four exit options, three exit options. OK, listen, what I mean is you can rent it and you can sell it. You, yes. can't, you can't, there's no big student market to rent to students. No. There's no big um, young professional market there. I doubt it's going to be yep. retirees and, and whatnot. So yep. it's a very limited set of exit options to either rent yep. or sell this. That, for me, is one of the biggest risks in this investment. If that market yes. goes wrong, whatever happens with it, you're very limited. So that, that in summary, is why I wouldn't ever invest there. Um, and you've certainly not given me any reasons to, but thank you anyway. Yep, no worries. Thank it? you. That's it. Right. I've rant over. Thank you. Peter, um, John. you've come here with a good product. You haven't pitched it correctly, in my view. Um, we're not, money lend we're not money lenders as such. Mm -hmm. So it it's co a complete no from me. However, if you see me afterwards, I think I can help you get it funded with crowd property. Um, I'm sure they would be interested in doing it or a another. So speak to us afterwards, speak to me afterwards, and I'll do my best to help you. Brilliant. How's that? Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Thank, yeah. you Thank you very you. much indeed. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.